In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you a website that can be used for game-based learning in the classroom, and it's called Oodloo. Here I am at oodloo.org, and I'm going to log into my account. If you don't have an account, of course you can register here, either as a student or a teacher, and then put in your email address and other information to set up your account and begin using Oodloo. Give me a minute to log into my account, and then I'll resume the video. Once you're signed into your account, you'll be taken to this screen where you get some help about how to begin using Oodloo. So start here by creating collections of your questions for your students. Next, you can manage groups of students. Maybe you want a group for first period and a different group for second period, or maybe you want both together, but you make those decisions here in Manage Groups. This is where you can go to see students' progress, to see who's succeeding, who's doing well, and here's where you can go to reward students as they play the games. There's also some support here as well as this button here. Now some of those features are part of the paid account. So if you click more my subscription it tells you what your current subscription is. So mine is free and always will be. This lets me create questions for my students so they can learn while playing games. I can create classes, assign specific questions to classes, I can monitor student achievements, award badges, and have unlimited number of students. So those are some pretty good free features that you get in the free account. If you do pay a dollar per month, there are some other options that you have. The one option that I wish were part of the free account is this one, whole class games, like game shows basically, or other contests. But that's okay. In the free account, I can create activities for my students that they can do in a gaming situation. Okay, I'm going to go back to the dashboard, and I'll click here where it says Start Here, Content, and Games. And on this page, I can either search for pre-existing content. For example, I'll search for Spanish Family, and it found a few question sets that might be related to the Spanish Family vocabulary. It can be hard to find exactly what you want here in this library, so you may need to create your own questions. I'll click Create Question Collection, Question Collection Name, Spanish Family. I click Continue. As you can see, I don't yet have any questions, so I need to create some. So I'll click here on Create Question, and I would like to start with True or False. Click Create. Here's the statement. The word Papa means Dad in Spanish. This statement is false, so I'm going to switch to false. Next, it says question feedback optional. I can give a hint or a clue, and if you click the advanced button like I did, it actually lets you have two clues that you give. But here in guidance, if they get this question wrong twice, they'll get this clue. No, a papa is a potato. Papa means dad, but needs that little accent. So that's a way to teach students, even when they get a question wrong, they're being taught. So I'll click Save. Now I have a question built in. I can create a second question. This one's going to be matching pairs. The question is match the family words. And then I will put in text, or if I prefer, I could put in images. Just by clicking, uploading image files, I could use images. But for now, for simplicity, I'll just put in text. I'll put the word here at the left and then what it's matched with on the right. So give me a minute to add a few more of these and then I'll resume the video. Okay, I've added in four different matching terms and then I'll click Save. So now I have a second kind of question. And I could continue to create different questions. There's multiple choice, which is just what you would expect. There's fill in the blank, type the missing word. There's sequencing, putting things in the right order. So I hope you'll explore the different question types that you might want to use. I would like to add a couple more questions, and I want them to be text multiple choice questions. So I will do that. Notice that you have to put the correct answer here and then incorrect answers here. So I will create a couple of these, and then I'll resume the video and show you how the students play this activity that I've created. Okay, I'm done creating questions for now. Now, just so you know, as an alternative to creating questions one at a time, you can bulk create questions. You can say, I want to create a bunch of true-false questions, and a whole grid appears here that you can quickly type your statements and mark if they're true or false. So that can be a lot faster, a lot easier to create a bunch of questions. So now, I can go back to my dashboard, and I can manage my groups. 
I could join a group that someone else created, but I'll just create a group myself. I'll call this Spanish 1. And let's say I teach three periods of Spanish 1. Maybe I'll just put them all here in this one group called Spanish 1. I click continue. Here I am as the teacher. If I want to, I can unlock the group so that other teachers can join. But maybe I just want it to be for me and my students. Next, I can add students to this class. And the best way to add students to your group is to use this student group code. And you can just click like I did, click here to put it up on the screen so that students can see it. Just tell your students, everyone go to oodloo.org and sign up for a student account using this code. Now, if you prefer, you can do that in advance. You can click add students to group. To add students to your group, give the students this code, ask them to visit this address and create their account. When they create their account and enter the group code, they will be instantly added to the group. Okay, so you can either copy paste this maybe into a Google Doc or a Word document and print it out, give it to the students. You could email it to them or to their families. But basically, if the students have this address and this code, they'll be able to sign up for a free Oodloo account and they'll be added to your specific class. Okay, so I've got my group now. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. Let's look at how we're doing. It says getting to know Oodloo. I've created a question collection and I've created a student group. The next step is to set a question collection to a group. In other words, to assign it to a group. So I'll click there and here's my list of questions. And another way to get to that same place is simply to click here where it says content and games. That takes you to the same exact location. So here's the activity I created and I would like to set this activity to a group. And here, if I paid for the premium features, I would have a choice to make. I could assign this activity as a formative assessment activity or as a summative assessment, as a test or a quiz. I'm fine with it just being a formative assessment activity. I think formative assessment is amazing and important. So I'll stick with that. I click Save. And so now the students in my class, my group here called Spanish 1, they have an assignment to complete. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any real students in that class, so it's hard to show that to you. But you can see it is assigned to my Spanish 1 group. Now, as the students complete the work, I can go here where it says Analytics and I can see how we're doing. Of course, no one has done anything because I don't have students, but the average performance would be listed here and the list of struggling students would be here. I can also put in some rewards, like I talked about earlier, but they are only for premium accounts. I'm gonna go back to content and games so you can see what the games are like. This activity that I created can be played by the students in a variety of ways but they all have to be individual games, not whole class games. Why? Because I didn't pay the 99 cents a month fee. So you can see that there are about 20 different games, and I'm sure that they'll be adding more games in the future. And I'll admit right off the bat that the way that these games help students learn the content is kind of arbitrary. Basically, the students answer a question. If they get it right, they get to play the game for a few seconds. If they get it wrong, they don't get to play the game. And then another question comes up. And so it's basically a game interspersed with questions. And like I said, I realize that that may not be the ideal best way to use games, but it can be somewhat effective, especially for memorization, drill and practice, things like that. So I'm going to click Critter Catcher. Let's try this game. And I'll click Play. How to play. Click Tap the Critters when you see them. That's it. So click Start. Which of these means I have a big family? Well, this is the correct answer. So I click. Now I get to play for a few seconds. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to be clicking. Okay, I am not great at this game. However, I got five points. Which of these is brother? Well, that's hermano. Now I get to play a little bit more. Now there is this randomization aspect of it. If it gives you a smiley face, you can play. If it's a frowny face, even though you got the question right, you can't play. Okay, so you see how the games work. Now these are beautiful games, very well made, and um, kind of fun. And they have your questions interspersed throughout the game. 
I could play that same list of questions in a different way. I could play Bubble Breakout with the same list of questions. I could play Air Puck with the same list of questions. Okay, so you can see the same questions in a different game. Oops, I got the frowny face this time. So while not perfect, I do think Oodlu can be a useful tool and helpful, maybe especially with younger students, or as a way to introduce vocabulary and practice vocabulary with your students. So here's a montage of the other games. Now, after playing my activity in 20 different games, I noticed a mistake or two that I need to fix. Fortunately, I can just go back to my dashboard, I can go into Content and Games, and I can click Actions and Edit my work. So this true-false question, I need to edit it because I said that the statement is true and it's actually false. I'll click Save. So that's fixed. That was easy. So if you do make mistakes, or if you want to add or remove questions at any time, you can do so. So I hope you found this video to be helpful, and hopefully you'll enjoy using Oodlu. Like I said earlier, it's not perfect, but it is a way for you to gamify, basically, or at least add an element of fun interspersed with your questions and your content. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media accounts like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribe button. If you do that, you'll be notified whenever I post another video. And watch for a video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, please consider becoming a patron of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below.